I can't think of like a clever way to introduce this. So I'm just gonna tell you guys what's going on. I've been commissioned um, by Square Enix to make six Final Fantasy dog costumes. Oh my god, I'm so excited, guys. <laughs> when I first heard this, I actually thought they meant like this kind of dog costume, not this kind of dog costume. Had a little moment there. Plot twist. I have a month to make these, slightly less. Six dog costumes, cosplay style. Never made dog costumes before in my life. Kinda want to build them off existing dog jackets, just so I can ensure that they're already like have a well-fitted, good quality base. It's gonna fit any dog pretty well and be adjustable. So I'm just gonna buy a ton of dog jackets to start with, and then just a ton of fabric. I'm gonna show you guys roughly what I'm planning for each one. Hey, it's Future Charlotte here. I'm sitting here in my dressing gown, currently doing the voiceovers and going through all the footage for the video you guys are watching right now. And I realize there's just missed like a bunch of important information. Firstly, there are three designs total based on if it Phoenix and Shiva from Final Fantasy 16 that's coming out 22nd of June, so really soon. So the six dog costumes that I'm making, there's going to be two costumes based on each design, so like a small and a medium. They can fit a bunch of different dogs. I hope that makes a bit more sense now if you see like the sizing of the costumes change a little bit between footage. And I'll let you guys get back to it. <sighs> Okay, that was for dramatic effect. I didn't actually buy all of this stuff. A bunch of it is actually scrap that I have from a previous project, but it involved a lot of red. So I've got all of this wonderful like silk and cotton. That's pretty decent quality, but all of the scraps are just not big enough for any like big projects. But these are gonna be perfect to make a bunch of fake feathers out of. What I'm doing for this first one is the Phoenix from Final Fantasy 16, which is this beautiful design. It has all of these luscious glowing reds, whole amber sort of feeling rather than the traditional Pop culture like orangey flames, beautiful like pinks uh, and like jewel greens and blues in some of the sections as well, which I'm so excited to try and do because you guys know that birds and feathers are my jam. All right, I'm gonna get the boring stuff out the way first though, which is going to be sewing the bias binding onto the dog jackets, hiding up those edges, and then I need to make like a base for the wings. So that's gonna be like a bunch of armature wire and foam so they kind of stick out the sides of each of the costumes. So I'm not gonna get into any technicalities about the kind of stitches I'm using or what bias binding is or anything like that. This video is more just to record my chaos for this whole project, but it's a nice easy way to finish off these edges and hide that sort of black high-vis stuff so that it doesn't show through under the feathers. So it did end up looking neat enough, so now I'm going to be cutting out some armature wire and starting on the wing frames. I think I wasn't supposed to take that little metal frame off because it just kind of sprang into this position. What have I done? All right, so wire is cut and I'm gonna cut out a couple of strips of upholstery foam that is basically gonna be wrapping the wire up. That way we've got some nice bit of body for the base of the wings and it's gonna make sure that that wire is completely in case there's no sharp pointy bits coming out of this costume. Hot glue is gonna be a great option for this one. It seems to soak into that upholstery foam just enough to give it a lot of grip. So I'm just gonna get this wire straight on and then just start wrapping that upholstery foam around it with a bit more of that glue just so it's like a nice little tube of foam. This is essentially what this looks like and it's super super long and I might cut them down but essentially that's gonna sit around and then this is gonna be kind of like your wing shape like that so yeah. So to cover up this little foam sausage I've just got some four-way stretchy red fabric it's almost like lycra and I'm literally just gonna chuck a straight stitch down here just to get that nice and wrapped up. I've got some cotton poplin here that I'm gonna just trace a rough wing shape onto and then sew this onto the existing frame. This is just gonna create like a bit of body here and something for me to glue all those feathers onto once I start layering them up. All right, two base sets of wings done. You can see I put in an extra little bit of dart here just to pull in this amount here. All of this will get covered in feathers and so most of this won't be seen apart from the very top here. But they are looking pretty awesome and people will be able to like bend them a little bit to make sure they look nice in photos. Time for my favorite part which is going to be making up these feathers. So I'm just going to roughly sketch the feathers out onto some paper and cut out each of these out to lay them down so I have a rough idea of the shapes of feathers that I want for these wings and also how many I want. Spoiler alert, I was way off. I ended up making like three or four times the amount of feathers that I thought I would need. For the feathers themselves, I decided to use all of my silk scraps because I had a bunch of awkwardly sized pieces and I've got some heat and bond here I'm going to iron on and essentially sandwich two pieces of this silk together. The iron on heat and bond will also serve as a layer in between which should stop the silk from 
spraying too much because I don't want to be hemming each of these feathers either. Before I sandwich my two pieces of silk together, I'm going to put a tiny thin piece of wire down the middle of the longer feathers. That's just going to help hold its shape a little bit. And when I'm ironing them together, I'm just going to iron nice and close up next to each of those wires. It's going to sort of go down the middle like the shaft of a feather anyway, so it shouldn't be too noticeable, I hope. Once I realize I'm going to have to do this hundreds of times, I sort of found a way of doing this in bulk. So I'm sort of processing 10 at once rather than ironing each of these feathers. So the next 24 hours of my life was just cutting out hundreds of feathers here. What I wouldn't give for a laser cutter at this stage. You can see I cut out some of these longer pieces here for the tail feathers. And to give these all some feathery texture, I'm just going to sort of cut a bunch of notches into each of these. Time to get some color on these. So I've actually got my airbrush here and some copper colored airbrush paint. And I'm just literally going to roughly go over the edges of each of these. It's going to give it a very sort of fiery texture with a little bit of glitteriness to it. It's also just going to help define each of those feathers against one another since they'll be layered up so much. So these are looking pretty awesome, but it's time to layer up some more color here because they do look very painterly with all those different like pinks and purples going through. So I want to incorporate that into this design. All of the paints I'm using here are acrylics that have been mixed with a fabric medium. That fabric medium is basically going to make sure they stay nice and flexible and they're not going to crack if the fabric moves around. You can see I've used a bit of a metallic paint for the like purples on the tail feather and the greens for those little jewel details on the wings. And this deeper purple paint I'm applying also just helps add to that feathery texture. To glue on these first layer of feathers, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up to the longest feathers first. The glue I'm using is actually a contact adhesive, which is commonly used with leather. I tend to find it works quite well for something like fabric, as long as you let it get a little bit tacky first. Now, this is some pretty strong glue, but I want to reinforce this. So I'm just going to like run my wing through a sewing machine just to make sure that this first layer of feathers is sewn on at the top. And I did not notice until I'm going through the footage just now that the camera stand that I had shakes with the table every single time I use the sewing machine. I'm so sorry, guys. So from here, it was basically just hours and hours of gluing on and layering up these feathers as I go. And keep in mind, I've got two sets of wings and then the front and back of each wing. So it felt like doing eight wings total. Okay, so it's Thursday about midday today. We started this on Monday. So pretty good progress so far. I've got most of the wings pretty much done apart from the finishing touches. So this is my little smaller pair for the smaller doggy. My larger pair here ready to rumble. These are my tail feathers, which are especially shiny. They've got kind of like purpley blue in the uh, concept art. So I wanted them to be extra shiny. To attach these onto the jacket itself, I'm just hand stitching down on the wings and going back over it a couple of times. I also ended up hand stitching around that exposed part of the wire that runs across the back. I glued and stitched on some of these tail feathers as well. And I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. That's the bulk of the work all done now. The rest is going to be filling out the rest of the dog jacket and just layering up more of these feathers. Most of the ones I'm putting on the body, you can see here I didn't decorate wide as much because I didn't want to overdo it and have it be too much detail. I finished off the wings with some real feathers along the top here just to give it a bit of that fluffy texture. I ended up using real feathers around the top of the jacket itself as well. I especially love this big spiky shaggy looking collar that I put on. The front here was looking a bit bare as well so I used some of that scrap double-sided silk that I made with the heat and bond and cut out this sort of like circular crest shape here and then added in some of that airbrush that I'd done on the previous pieces. I have finished this off with a row of those same feathers, but I've attached them all on one piece of that silk just to give it like a nice clean edge. I'm super happy with how these are looking. The wings are bending nicely. They'll be nice and easy to adjust. Hopefully not too heavy on the doggies. I've tried to keep everything relatively light and it's looking pretty nice from the front as well. So I'm so excited to see this one on a dog. Jumping straight into Ifrit because I don't really have a solid plan to tell you guys about anyway. I did find this amazing fabric that already looks like like glowing lava. So I'm basically just going to sew this onto the dog jacket base and just cover that whole base with it. Once I've sewn around the edge, I'm just going to go back over it a bunch of times with a sort of wavy straight stitch, just freehand, which is going to create some texture, but it's also just going to assure that this fabric is well and truly secured onto the base. Now, the most notable feature about Ifrit's is his amazing horns. So I'm basically just going to sketch this out on some paper, obviously a much more simplified version for our little doggy costumes. But using this, I'm going to map out a series of cones that I'm essentially going to cut out of some thin pieces of EVA foam. I'm then going to sort of curve them 
them a little bit with a heat gun and glue those edges together. I'm not quite sure how to explain this bit, I'm sorry guys, but there are some great tutorials out there on how you can make your own EVA foam horns. I also have a tutorial that I did last time about a bunch of different ways to make horns. For this one, I did want those hollow horns because I want to make these as light as possible to make sure that they are comfortable on our doggy models and that they're not going to be too sharp and they're not going to be too brittle that they break easily from a couple of knocks. At least we can be looking like a ghost, but it is nighttime, so I'm getting no natural light coming in here. But I've gotten uh, some big horns, some little horns for our little doggo, and then like a bunch of little spare horns, which I can use for general spikes. I've also just sort of slapped together two sort of big cone shapes, which are going to be the base of the tail on each one, because he's got this big tail spike. And then he's got like a ton of different spines and whatnot, which I actually got these awesome little foam dowels, which are going to be perfect because I could just like cut them into little sections, quickly cut them into like little rough cone shapes to create like a ton of different spikes and spines and things like that. And then I'm going to have a big sheet of EVA foam, which I can cut into some more flat sections, like more like plates. And we'll see how that goes. Ifrit's design in this game is absolutely fantastic. It definitely is like spiky and demonic. I can't quite tell if he's supposed to be more dragony or lizardy with like spines and scales or whether he's supposed to be more shaggy like a wolf. I kind of like that ambiguity since he is kind of very fiery. And and I'm hoping that these little foam cones that I'm carving out will translate to that design either way. For some of the focal points on his body, he does seem to have this sort of plating, I suppose. So I'm going to cut out very simplified versions to mimic those shapes, which is going to sit on the shoulders or the shoulder equivalent for dogs, and then on the rump and some of the other points on the back of this costume. With all of my pieces here cut out ready to go, I want to add some detail in. And what I'm using here is essentially a wood burning tool, which essentially burns the foam as I'm dragging it along, which is going to create these little divots here and give it some great lined texture. I want to take a second here to stress safety and precautions here. If you are a minor, do not try this without adult supervision under any circumstances. And even for you adults out here, please make sure you're being very careful or wear hand protection if you can. Please make sure you're doing this outside or in a ventilated space and wear a respirator as well. There are some foam there. Fumes coming off this foam when you are doing this. Remember, these tools are not designed for this purpose, so you have to be extra careful. Now I have line work over all of my plates and horns and spines. I'm going to get a heat gun over each of these pieces one more time. It's going to help seal that foam before I put primer on it. And some of these flat pieces here, I can curve while it's still heated to sort of shape it a little bit so it's not quite so flat. For priming, I'm opting for a method which is more expensive but less time consuming, which is just plaster dip on everything. Again, guys, if you are doing this, make sure you are having a ventilated space and preferably a respirator on as well. Now the good thing about having black foam and black plastic dip is they're already kind of close to the color I want. I do have a sort of metallic gunmetal gray color which I'm just going to apply as paint over all of my pieces essentially using like a sponge or dry brushing so it mostly just covers the areas that are not carved in. The color change is subtle but now it kind of looks like shiny obsidian which I love. You can kind of see the change a little bit when I hold these horns side by side like this. Now if it's got all of these like cracks or marbling or veins or something where all of that glowing ember is showing through so I'm basically just going to slap a ton of orange paint into some of these cracks that I've got particularly on these larger pieces. I'm actually using mini paints for these because they just have a great texture that I love working with but after the first round you can see that when they dried they just weren't very opaque so I wanted to bump this up a little bit. To do that I just went back over all of these cracks with a sort of light paint peach color and then back over it with the bright orange that had like a nice lighter base to really make that color as bright as possible. And as you can see, that worked perfectly. So we are ready to rumble with assembling this now. Starting with Ifrit's weird spiky tail parts. This is going to be glued on with contact adhesive again, but I am just going to hand stitch each of these larger pieces on in places that you can't necessarily see just for some extra reassurance and durability. I've got this awesome breastplate style piece, breastplate style piece at the front of the costume here. And I got a couple of pieces here that I'm just going to curve around and stick some Velcro on to make little doggy cuffs. These might not be super popular with the pups, so they're going to be just an optional extra on the costumes. With these smaller horn pieces, I'm going to put these up around the collar just to give it a lot of bulk around that area, kind of to try and match Ifrit's general shape. From here, I'm going to layer up some of these scales and spines, very similar to how we did with a Phoenix's feathers. All right, so most of the scaly parts of Ifrit is done. There's still a bit of work to go on these guys, but they're looking 
nice and demonic here. The next step I want to do is getting a sort of helmet slash hat done for each of them. So for that, I've got this hat elastic, which is a nice thick piece. And these little beads, which I think might be brass, I actually found in my stash. I think they were second hand originally. They perfectly fit the elastic enough that I can pull this and it kind of stays in place, which means that's going to be perfect for adjusting. So you can put that over Dougie's head and then adjust this upwards so it's sitting snug and not hurting any pops. So we'll see how this goes. For the hat, I'm basically cutting out the equivalent of like a thick headband out of EVA foam. These holes here are basically where the horns are going to sit. I want to keep this basically as thin as possible and as light as possible. I don't imagine many dogs are going to be very happy if there's a giant big heavy helmet on them. So we just want enough to support the horns and stay on there safely and that's about it. Gluing each of these horns into that place there with the contact adhesive once more. I decided I wanted a little bit of reinforcement here so I just got these little tiny squares of foam that I'm going to curve into that shape and uh, basically glue on the bottom here like these little tabs that you can see I'm doing and that's just going to hopefully just make it a little bit more sturdy and not going to fall out of the headband itself. To attach the elastic I've basically just cut some slits in here that I'm just going to shove the elastic through with a pencil, threading it through either side here and then having them come back out the top again on the outer side of the horn. For around the collar here, I've got this fantastic shaggy black faux fur and I'm just going to roughly trace out the collar shape that I want. To cut this out, I'm actually going to use a hobby knife because when you're working with faux fur, it's really hard to use these standard scissors without cutting into the pile of the fur itself. This should keep the fur nice and long and shaggy. I've sewn this onto the very front of the dog jacket here, but to basically fold it back over the rest of the jacket. I'm just going to use hot glue which works very very well for gripping onto faux fur. I've also cut some slits in this fabric so I can sort of push it between these spikes on the back of the chest here. I don't know what I mean by back of the chest. It's literally the back. Totally forgot to film it guys but I did paint in some of this orange fabric just to leave those cracks to match the rest of the plating and scales going on but here's how they're looking. Ifrit is honestly one of my favorite designs that I've done for this one because it just looks so awesome awesome, demonic, a little bit terrifying. Can you imagine this on like a pug or something? This is going to be incredible. With Ifrit done and looking amazing, it's time to start on Shiva. I will apologize in advance, guys. There are a lot of missing parts to this footage because this was during the final stretch up to the due date and I was really feeling the time crunch. Anyway, we did find these amazing reversible blue doggy raincoats, which I'm just shortening a little bit and that's going to make a great base for Shiva in all of those beautiful whites and blues. So my rough plan for Shiva is it's it's going to be more like a big cape or a cloak rather than like a, across the body like it is for Ifrit and Phoenix just because her design is obviously more humanoid as well. So I've got some fantastic polyester satin and some polyester organza I'm going to layer up and I've chosen artificial fabrics on purpose but I'll get back to that. For now I'm just creating several tiers of these circle shapes. Now I want to add in some of the blue with some beautiful texture so I'm basically going to do some gradient dyeing which is essentially where you dip the fabric in and out of the dye and usually you do this quite carefully to avoid those streaks but I really want a bit of streaking and unevenness just to give it that texture so I'm just going to scrunch up a lot of these pieces as I'm dipping them. I am using a synthetic dye for this one as well so I've done this a couple of times just to get that color a little bit darker. It's hard to tell until they're dry but just looking at them on the clothesline they're looking pretty good. So I tried to give the girls a bunch of seed on the ground so they wouldn't walk under my feet but they just keep following me. And more interesting than seed Beatrice. So I'm quite impressed by how this worked. It's gonna be hard to see in the light. Actually let me try this with the ring light off. A little easier to see. Slight blue tone at the bottom. It's got those streaks which is what I was after this time. The one thing I am noticing it's a little bit more of that sort of like dark royal blue and I do want those sort of aqua tones in there which she has. And now I don't have a dye but I do have a fabric spray paint that I got which is just sort of paint in a can. It has that really nice tone to it and I love this texture that it gives so I'm just gonna like splatter each of these with a bit of that, give it a bit of texture and do the same on some plain white that hasn't been dyed yet in case they want to like put a bit of that extra stuff throughout. I don't really have a game plan here exactly guys, I'm just sort of like doing stuff as I go and seeing what feels right. <laughs> oh hey, it is way easy to see the color blue that I was talking about from this angle. So there you go guys. After spraying these a little bit, I've just let them down on the floor to dry. Before you guys worry about my carpet, this is an off cut of carpet that I've got down in my crafting space so that I'm not destroying 
using any actual carpet. Anyway, with these pieces dry, I'm just going to be starting to sew them onto the dog jacket itself. And I'm layering up a piece of satin with a piece of organza over the top for each of these layers. Over the top of each stitch, I've actually sewn a piece of white satin just to hide those stitching. At the hood though, I got a piece of blue bias binding that's quite thick just to create a really nice solid edge around the hood. Oh yeah, I haven't even mentioned that. These dog jackets have a hood. These Shiva dogs are going to look epic. All right, with the base mostly assembled, I decided to cut into a lot of these little fabric pieces and kind of make them a little bit more jagged on the edge to match Shiva's design. Once I was happy with this looking a little bit more spiky, it's time to finish off these edges. And this is why I use polyester fabrics here because I'm actually going to slightly melt the edges with a lighter, which is going to basically seal it in. It's not going to fray and it's going to create some really interesting jagged edges. Now, again, do not try this if you are a minor without adult supervision. Adults, if you are trying this, please make sure your space is completely clear. You are not near anything flammable and make sure you have something nearby to put out the fire because you can very easily catch the fabric alight here if you are not being careful. I'm also wearing my respirator for this one and have a window open so there's plenty of ventilation. This is a really fun technique, but you need to take those safety precautions first. Okay, so it has been a mad dash in this last week to try and get all of the costumes done in time for the due date for this one. So I have been neglecting filming some of the process for this last part. I am really sorry, but here's how the swords ended up looking when they are all painted up, which I'm pretty happy with. For the hilt, I've just got like a really hard bit of foam here with a uh, wooden skewer through it to hold that rigid shape. I have just put some like satin blanket ribbon wrapped around here and glued into place and they can see a little rubber stopper at the end of it just to hold it in place. Now these swords essentially sit on the back of the Shiva costume. They have these little tabs that I've sewn on and they can go straight through so they can sort of sit on the back of the doggo like a holster and they can sit either side or like running down the back. A few different ways to do that. And I added a little bit of uh, extra detail on the hood back here just to give it some extra little pattern there. Pretty happy with how the collars turned out as well. Just added some extra detail there and the crowns are all looking nice and shiny so I'm pretty happy with how they are all looking. I have done a lot of touch-ups on the others just reinforced stitching where things are looking a little bit dodgy or like paint touch-ups that sort of thing and I think we are ready to rumble guys. I was lucky enough to have a bunch of different volunteers from friends and friends of friends for their uh, little doggies to try on some of my costumes so I could test them out which was so much fun to visit all these different dogs and see them in action. Uh, with the costumes and I'm really happy and excited to see them on the show dogs now as well. What I have done is make a bunch of these little uh elastic straps here with some velcro on them so that if we have any bigger dogs we have an option to help them wear those costumes as well. I wanted to test out these costumes to make sure they were comfy and easy for the dogs to move in, that they are durable and see if anything needed any changes or reinforcing. So now I get to go to Sydney and be part of the photo shoot or at least on the side of the photo shoot for these doggies and I'm so excited and a little bit nervous I'm not gonna lie. I'm so excited to see how this goes. Let's get into it. This was the the best weekend ever. Being part of this photo shoot was incredible. Seeing the costumes in action, seeing all these excited doggies. The photographer was absolutely incredible. I hope you like some of this background footage I got. I really, really did enjoy this one. And then they're going to be worn at an event called Calls of Valisthe, which Square Enix is putting on to celebrate Final Fantasy 16 coming out. So that is it guys. I am so happy with how everything turned out. I don't think I'm ever going to have a project like this ever again. I mean how often do you get asked to make a bunch of like Final Fantasy costumes for dogs? Thank you so much for Square Enix for this amazing unique opportunity and thank you guys to all of my volunteers and their dogs who helped me try on all the costumes before they were ready to rumble. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did please give it a like, a share, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing a a lot more in the future as well. I also have a Patreon so if you want to see more behind the scenes stuff or lots of extra content, exclusive content, I'm doing a bunch of different stuff on there. I will put a link in the description below as well. I want to take a, take, there, take a second to thank my top tier patrons as well. Artemis, Dakota, Tim, Yuri, Tamara and Residual Images. You guys are absolutely amazing and thank you to all of my patrons. Without you guys uh, the stuff like this would not be possible for me to do so you are amazing. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!